everyone, I'm Lisa Curcio and I'd like to welcome you here to Lisa's Stamp Studio. Today is Cyber Monday. It is November 28th, the year is 2022. This is a stream live right here on YouTube. I am so glad that you've joined me, whether this is your first time or perhaps you are returning. Tonight, I have an incredible gift idea for you because perhaps you're like me and funds are a little lean this year, but you have certain people you wanna make something for or give something to. So I've got a handmade gift box idea that includes cards, but I've got a ton of tips for you about watercoloring as well. Now, not only am I gonna demonstrate the cards and the box for you tonight, but I have several other samples to share with you. And one is a bonus for tonight's live stream. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you stick around for that. Now, a couple things before we get started. Typically, this being the last Monday of the month, Gina, my daughter, is live with me. But she was gone for Thanksgiving, came back Saturday with the flu and has a bad case of the flu. So she's not going to be here tonight. She is scheduled to be live with me next Monday. So I hope you'll mark your calendars for that. Stepping in her place tonight to moderate, you'll see Bob Curcio's name. We call him Bob the Builder. That's my husband. His name is in blue off to the side. We also have Marion Lenhart. Her name is not highlighted, but they're here to help provide answers to your questions and provide you with links until Gina's comes back with us. Now, a couple things you need to know. First and foremost, you're gonna want that free project sheet for tonight, because I have a template in there for you on how to make the box that holds these cards. You're definitely gonna wanna download that. That link will be available when tonight's live stream is over. It's down in the video description below. And we would love to chat with you during tonight's live stream. But in order to do so, YouTube requires that you log in using your Gmail address. So in order to chat live or to leave a comment on the replay, I hope that you'll do that. I come back and I read every single comment. I would love to hear from you. All right. And like I said, it is Cyber Monday. So before we get started, I want to remind you about this. Perhaps you're on my email list for my free, free weekly e-newsletter. And if you are, you know all about this. Today, exclusively here at Lisa's Stamp Studio only, all my PDF tutorials in my library are 50% off. That is only good today through 11.59 p.m. Eastern time. That's today, November 28, 2022. So 50% off. There are over 100 tutorials in there. You can see here on the screen, we've given you lots of ideas on how you can use them. And if you're a demonstrator, you're going to love these ideas for future events as well. So head over to my website, click on shop, and then PDF tutorials. Vast library there. You can purchase them at 50% off and immediate downloads for you. All right, let's get started. We are going to start with the watercoloring tonight. So let me bring in my little board. Now we get lots of questions about this. This is my art board, and this is linked for you as well as this low tap tape over on my website in my craft room favorites. Now, let me just show these to you first. I love this when I'm watercoloring because it kind of contains all the mess. It wipes off super clean. It's very, very thin, and it allows me to keep my fingers clean because I can use the handle. Now, you'll find my craft room favorites on my website under shop, and there I have linked products for you that I use here with my Stampin' Up! products just to make life easier. So I'm using that low-tech frog tape, and I don't waste it. So when I've got leftover pieces, I leave them on the cover. Now I'm gonna turn this this way so it's better for your camera view. I've rolled up a couple small pieces here because the first tip I wanna give you about this project is if you decide you're going to do a watercolor format, and if you don't, don't worry, I've got several other samples for you that are otherwise, do all your watercoloring at once. So I've got one piece that's here. I'm gonna tack that down. I've got another piece, let's move that one over. I'm gonna tack that one down and I've got a little tiny piece. Now I will tell you that I lined up a whole bunch of these. So I did all the watercoloring at once so they could all sit and dry, which is why I'm doing them first. Now, if you've not watched any of my watercolor tutorials, you'll find quite a bit of those here on my YouTube channel. I am going to start with Sahara Sand Ink. And I'm gonna open that up and I'm gonna nest that right here for you. And I'm gonna bring in a clear block. I am going to tap on here to pick up the ink on the block. That's going to act as my palette. And I am bringing in one of the water painters. Now these are self-contained. You're gonna put tap water down inside. 
The tap water here where I live has a lot of sediment in it, so I prefer to use distilled or filtered water in here because I don't want to plug, um, plug up that bladder that's here. But because I'm going to be doing a lot in a short amount of time during the live stream, I've got a little rag here, and I brought in a little cup of water that's just off your screen. The very first thing you're going to need to do is wet the paper. I find that if you do that, that's going to make your life a whole lot easier because when we're doing watercoloring, we're often looking for an abstract background. I'm going to take a drip here and kind of water this down to make a little puddle. And I'm just going to kind of make a little arc here. Okay, I'm going to kind of go like this. You cannot mess this up. This is why I love this. This is even great for the kids. Now this one here, I hadn't wet yet. So let's go ahead and add a little water. I'm not even worried if my cup has dirty water in it. It does not matter. So you're going to go ahead and take the rest and you're going to do the exact same thing here. I want to caution you, if you decide you need more ink here, you need to wipe that off on your rag before you put it back into your ink pad. You want to, don't want to transfer all that water to your ink pad. And I want to dirty this up a little bit because this is actually going to hold my greeting. The great thing about watercolor paper is it's really resilient. And this is the Fluid 100 watercolor paper. It is amazing, which means if I want more color on here, all I have to do is go back in and add more. You can let it dry and then do multiple layers. I'm going to take this just off camera. I'm cleaning that off and you're going to see my block here and I'm going to come over here on my little rag and I'm just going to clean that all off. I am going to switch colors now. I'm going to go ahead and close that up and now I'm going to switch over to soft sea foam. Really hard to see on camera with all the bright lights here but it's a really really light green. So I'm going to dip that inside that ink pad as well and I'm going to do the exact same thing. That paper might still be wet and I'm looking at it on camera and I'm like, yep, that looks pretty wet, but we'll just add a little bit more to be safe. I'm going to take that water from that brush and I'm going to add a little bit more color. Again, there is no rhyme or reason with this. I'm going up about, oh, another third above the Sahara sand. This one, I'm just going to leave just as it is. I'm not going to do anything with that. Cleaning off the brush, you can see how quick this is. I'm taking this on my rag. We're going to wipe that off. And now what we're going to do is we are going to switch over to pool party. So this is my third color. Keep in mind if you're going to watercolor at home and you're going to use a merit of colors like I am, be very, very cognizant that two colors together can make a third color. So obviously yellow and red are going to make orange. Again, I'm going to make sure that this is good and wet because I do want this to bleed a little bit. Let's add a little bit more water there to kind of thin that out. And then here comes my blue. I love this wide brush. Now this is sold in my online store as with 99% of what I'm showing you. So I'll make sure I let you know along the way. It comes with three brushes in the package so that you're able actually to choose the bristles that are going to suit the project that you're going to do best. So this is obviously the wide brush. There's also a medium tip and a narrow tip. And I love to watercolor because you can't mess this up. So I've added water over the top. So if ever you get heavy handed and you've got just kind of a large streak there, go ahead and take your water, there's my brush, and just move it. Super simple. Really important, the paper has to dry before we do some stamping. So I'm cleaning off my block and then I'm going to push this off to the side and let's now work on our other projects. I am also going to move my water cup because anybody else like me, it never fails, right? We're going to spill it all over the place. Let me give you an important tip about your water painter or your watercolor brushes at home. Rinse them out, make sure they're clean, squeeze out that excess water, bring those bristles to a nice point before you put that cap back on. You don't want those stray hairs to come out the bottom. They'll obviously pick up color, which is awful when you're trying to paint because you'll have split, uh, stray splatters everywhere. Let me reach behind me very quickly and I'm gonna move that water. Okay, now we can get started. I have already started one of the cards, and I'm not going to do all the cards with you tonight, but I have an array of cards to show you, lots of different ones. I started with Pool Party cardstock base for this specific project that I'm demonstrating. I did do the embossing ahead of time just to save a little bit of time in tonight's live stream, but I want to show it to you. This is called Cascading Ruffles. I love it because you can go in either direction and I like that it looks a little bit wavy like a wave and I thought that was going to look really good with my water coloring. Now I don't want to deboss what I've raised so I'm going to flip this upside down and I'm going to work specifically along the edge with my bone folder. 
Now, before you joined me, I went ahead and I pulled out the layering circles dies. Like I said, you are going to watercolor all of the images that you want to do first so they can all dry. Now I'm gonna bring you back to this piece here that we just did a few minutes ago. Now, obviously it's not dry, you can see that it's wet. But once it was dry, I took my circle dies and I die cut a circle from here. So I found if I just did all my watercoloring work first, then I could do all my shapes next. Again, rectangles and squares are fine, so you can use your trimmer. So I did do that part ahead of time, which left me with this. Now I am going to protect my work surface with one of the small grid papers because I wanna do a little bit of stamping here. And this time I'm going to bring in the soft suede ink. It is the only color that I am using for all of my images and wait till you see the versatility of this. So we're gonna go ahead and open that up. And on this specific image here, I have brought out a cattail image. And let me show you where this came from. This is Heron Habitat. Now you might be thinking, well, isn't this a Christmas gift project? The answer is yes. One of the things I want you to be cognizant of is when you're going to give boxed greeting cards as a handmade gift idea, I recommend that the cards are not necessarily Christmas because they're gonna get received on Christmas and they're gonna use them afterwards. So make your cards a myriad of occasions so that the receiver can use them throughout the year. I like this because it's not gender specific. So it's great for the guys as well as the girls. And obviously if you're a nature enthusiast, you're going to love this. There are coordinating dies. You can buy it as a bundle, which will save you 10%. So that's where I got this from. I'm gonna ink this up and I'm gonna kind of stamp this right off here to the side. So we're gonna create a little bit of a silhouette. I like to stamp off my excess ink before I take my stamp just off camera to clean it. I find that really cuts down on the mess. Little tiny birds, so we're gonna ink those up as well. I always like to check because if I've gotten really excited and I've rocked that image, you're gonna get ink around the outside and we don't want that today. So lots of firm, even pressure and a lift. And then I am going to move over to another image here. You know what, I forgot to mount it. Let me grab it really quick. From the stamp set, these are cling stamps, here it is. There's one here of just a little bit of grassy seascape, which I think is gonna fill in very, very nicely. Solid stamps, which makes them easy to use. And I'm just gonna kind of gravitate these here along the outside edges, just so we have some texture across the bottom. All right, now here comes the best part. I'm gonna set this off to the side for just a moment, and I am going to grab a separate piece of watercolor paper. This time, I am going to stamp that bird in the soft suede. I didn't want to necessarily color the bird in, but I wanted the bird to have some color. So what I did is I grabbed one of the smaller watercolor painters here. It says push on two sides, so I'm gonna give that a good squeeze, get water through those bristles, okay? So that I know it's wet. I don't want it soaking wet, but it's going to move the color that I just stamped because this is a dye-based ink pad. So I can kind of give this just a little bit of color without overpowering it. You're gonna hold this over your rag. You're gonna squeeze it through. Water's gonna come through the bristles. Again, you're gonna know how to clean it because I just showed you that. Once that was dry, I used the coordinating die for that to die cut the bird. Now I did do that ahead of time to save a little bit of time, which left me with this. Now let's put this first card together and I've got more tips for you on how those other pieces that we've already stamped. Let me move some items out of the way to make a little bit of room tonight. But I decided this needed some layers because it was gonna look a little lost on here as it is. So I've got a piece of white cardstock here and I have some designer series paper. Now this paper is double-sided, look at that. Isn't that foil finish gorgeous? This is from Dis The Splendid Day. That's a tongue twister. Splendid Day Designer Series Paper Package. It's specialty paper because there are foil images on one side. I'm not using the foil side tonight. I'm gonna to use that very subtle image. The one thing I love about the Stampin' Up! Designer Series papers is because they're double-sided, not only do you have the theme, but you also have an alternative side that can be used all year round. I don't do many things straight, so I'm gonna turn this horizontally. That's gonna allow me to create that very narrow margin here for that cardstock, and we'll attach this. I want to remind you that all of the cutting dimensions and the supplies for tonight's project are gonna be in that project sheet when we're done. So let's go ahead and take this and let's add some dimensionals to the backside. 
I love these because they're going to give my project a little bit of a lift and that's going to give this a little bit more of a 3D professional look. I'm going to be using my Take Your Pick tool. It has a paper piercing tool attachment. This dials out so that you can change it. It comes with a stylus tool as well. Love that putty tip for those little small pieces. But you're going to see that I use that tool here to help me release those paper backings. I have arthritic hands and those little tiny dexterity things are really, really challenging for me. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this here and then I'm going to take that little bird and let's add one more dimensional to the back side here. And then we're going to remove that backing as well. And we're going to add this here. Now the same concept is going to work on all the cards and I am going to show them to you. But I decided that I wanted to add a little pizzazz to this because I thought it was a little bit boring. Well, this doesn't want to be picked up, does it? So I cut a several pieces of linen thread and I did do that beforehand. And I thought I had three, but tonight I guess I only have two. Let's go ahead and add those here. I'm going to add this as texture to my project. This is the silicone craft sheet and I absolutely love it because adhesive, liquid glue, and hot glue will not stick to it. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this over and I'm going to add some adhesive to the back side here and here. And this is going to give me a margin to attach those threads. So I'm going to come in across the front and I'm just going to eye this on where I want it. So I'm going to kind of stretch it across, tack it down to the back, and I'm going to do the exact same thing now on this side. I swear I had that linen thread. The Lord knows where it's at now. I probably lost it in the shuffle of all this stuff. So the one in your project sheet is slightly different. I like odd numbers. I find that they are a little bit more pleasing to the eye. So that gives us this. I'm going to go ahead and add this now to the card and we're going to add the greeting and you're going to notice it's one of those pieces that we had watercolored. So let's flip that over. I'm going to come in with my dimensionals. Once again, that's going to elevate this panel. I want to make sure that these are well balanced because this is sizable and I know that I'll probably be mailing this card or that person will be mailing this card when I give this as a gift. So we're just going to remove those backings here. And then this is going to go right here on the front of the card base. Now, do you remember that little tiny piece I watercolored? I actually waited till it was dried. I stamped the greeting from that same stamp set, but I want this to go across here. So you can use glue dots or tonight in my case, I'm going to use dimensional. So let's put a couple of those here. That shape works really, really well to your advantage so that you can get inside those little nooks and crannies. And that is going to go here. Simple, simple, simple. So this is card number one. I have others to share with you. But now what I want to do is I want to move on to the box portion that's going to hold all the cards. All right. So let me change out some of my little supplies here. Oh, I found that linen thread. That figures, right? I'm sure you've been there. All right. You'll recall that we had watercolored another panel. Now I've got a piece of cardstock. I'm going to layer that on. So I'll come back to my silicone craft sheet. Do you notice how there are some edges here that look a little bit darker and lighter? And you can do that by allowing the paper to dry or using your heat tool to speed up the process if you're impatient. And that will give you some density and layers of watercolor. You cannot get this wrong, so enjoy. But you know what, before I do that, I wanna teach you one more thing. Let's go ahead and let's bring in some scratch paper here. And I've got the soft suede marker. Now, this is the beauty of Stampin' Up! products is the color coordination. So we have ink that matches our dye-based markers, that match our alcohol-based markers, our cardstock and our accessories. Love it. There are two tips here. I'm going to use the brush tip. So this obviously is optional, but if you want this to look speckled, more like sand, here's a tip for you. You're going to take off the cap, and I'm right-handed, so I'm going to put that in my dominant hand. You're going to want to watch me very carefully. Work over a protected surface and you don't want to damage the tip, so be very careful. You're going to put it inside the cap and you're lightly going to flick. And I don't know if you can pick it up on camera just yet, but I'm just going to move this up a little bit so I can come a little bit lower. And you can't necessarily kind of direct where it's going to go, but you can see that there's now some splatters there. Isn't that fun? And again, you want to be very careful with your marker to do that. Now you can do that with both the dye-based and the alcohol-based markers. Let's go ahead and add this, and then I've got some other tips for you. So I'm going to come back in with my Stampin' Seal Plus. This stuff is super duper strong, which is great for watercolor paper. I am going to do it horizontally to try to get that even border all the way around. We'll tack that in place. 
you can see that dye base marker dries very, very quickly. Now, to work on the focal point for the front of this box, I've got some white cardstock, and I opted to stamp here instead of on watercolor paper because I wanted those images to be very, very vibrant. Now, I've got a piece of watercolor paper here that I did earlier. I don't know if you can tell, there's a slight color difference, and there's definitely a texture difference. So when you stamp images on this, it's going to pick up that texture, and the colors tend to be muted. So keep in mind, you can mix these, which is what we're going to do tonight, so I can teach you the difference. So I'm going to come back to the soft suede ink, and this is all from that same stamp set. I'm bringing in that gorgeous heron, so I'm going to ink that up, nice big stamp, and then I'm going to stamp that here on the white cardstock. Now remember, there are dies for everything. Stamping off that excess ink, that allows me not to have to run to the sink to rinse that out every time it gets muddy. Now I also want to go and add some of these cattails, but guess what? I want two colors. So I'm going to show you a little trick. So I am going to come in now with the soft sea foam that we've previously used. I am going to ink this up. Do you remember that marker? All right, we're going to use that once again. I'm going to have my scratch paper nearby. I'm taking off the brush tip. I'm going to go right over the top, wipe off that excess ink because I don't want to pick up any of that and leave that on my marker. I'm going to come down here to that sandy area, wipe that off my marker. This works great if you're using a dark marker. We're going to huff. <sighs> I call that the Darth Vader. That gives you two different colors. Isn't that fantastic? So stamp in the lightest color first, use your dark marker, and then as long as you wipe off your tip, you have no problems with carrying over that color. Now that is a, a technique for a dye base marker. I've never even tried it on an alcohol-based um, I'll be honest with you, I just haven't. I'm going to come back to that ink pad in a few minutes, and obviously, ahead of time, I die cut those. So we've got those here. All right, I did die cut one more thing. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That's part of the dies. You get the texture as well as the die cut for that seagrass, which I think is stunning. But let's go ahead and let's work on this, which is going to be part of the focal point for this card. So I've got two pieces here. I've got that same designer series paper, Splendid Day, double-sided. There's that foil side. And we're going to use that greenery side for this. So let's start by putting these two pieces together. Again, I'm going to add my adhesive here. And then we're going to work on the box and then assemble. So I'm going to add a little bit more adhesive here along the sides. Whenever I'm making a 3D project, I really am a little bit more generous with my adhesive because I know I'm going to be hand-delivering it versus mailing it. Again, I'm going to go sideways. Let's see if we can get a nice border on here. I do like to work over my silicone craft sheet most often because guess what? That contrast makes it easier to see, doesn't it? So we're going to push that down. All right, so now we have this panel. So this is what we're going to build upon. So I'm going to flip that over. We're going to add our dimensionals, and then we're going to work on making the box. And I can't wait to show you all these other cards and several other boxes and designs for you. I think you're gonna have a lot of ideas to give beautiful, affordable gifts to friends, families, coworkers, maybe teachers this year that are gifts from the heart. And Cause you know, it's, it's tough this year. Things are a lot more expensive than they were last year. And we wanna give, give, but we can't always afford it, right? You know what I forgot to do? I wanted my birds. Let's be brave. I've got those little birds here. I know that there's an elevation difference there. Okay, say a prayer for me. I know you're all watching. Okay, checking to make sure. Here we go, firm, even pressure. Let's see, there we go. Hey, that worked out, I got lucky. I'm gonna close this up. And now what we're going to do is we're gonna talk about adhering these small pieces. Many of you tell me that you are really intimidated by this, and I get it, I mean, I am too. But the best thing that has ever come into my life has been the fine tip applicator. Now, this is linked for you in my craft room favorites. I actually use the multi-purpose liquid glue sold in my online store. And I squeeze it down after I open this. Now it's thick, so you're gonna have to tap it and squeeze and be patient. This is the same bottle I've had for two years. The rubber band was a YouTube viewer's recommendation, which really holds that cap down in place so it's not flopping around while I'm trying to glue things. And let me do that. These arthritic hands sometimes just don't wanna work. So let's go ahead and get that. There we go. I shake it down and we're gonna get the glue started. You wanna make sure that it's flowing freely, but do you see how tiny you can make this? All right, 
Step number one, I do know that I want these intertwined. So I'm gonna kind of go ahead and just kind of make this how I want it. And I can see I'm gonna put the seagrass probably down first. So let's go ahead and let's add our small drops here. The one nice thing about this glue is you don't need a whole lot. You're gonna put the needle tip and just drag it right on your paper. And the beauty is because of the strength and it dries very, very quickly. So I'm gonna work here near the bottom and we're gonna tack that down. Next, we're gonna come into that seagrass and I'm gonna work mainly here at the tips because I'm gonna see if I can tuck that a little bit. And you know, no two cards are ever the same. I'm sure you've made a project more than once and it looks different the second time than it does the first time. But those two colors together really are striking. And now, now we have the crane. Now you could have put the crane behind or you could put the crane in front. And like I said, no two cards are the same. If you want to put this up on dimensionals, you certainly can. And you know what, for fun tonight, let's go ahead and do that. The one inside your project sheet is slightly different. So that'll give you some ideas on how you can situate this. And then we're gonna talk about those legs in just a minute. One of the reasons I opted to put the crane in the back is because obviously those are really, really narrow. But let me give you another tip. If you have the mini dimensionals, right here on the paper, you can take your scissors and cut them in half to make them smaller. And I've got a half here that I haven't used previously. Those are gonna fit famously in those little tiny areas. So I'm gonna take that off and that's gonna give me some equal balance from the top to the bottom. Let's go ahead and let's see if we can tuck this little guy underneath here because I want a little bit of a 3D look. Yep, I think I can. And I'm gonna kind of go in like this and then we're gonna attach this here. Isn't that pretty? So the front is done. All right, let's make the box. Here comes the fun part. Now we're gonna start with our cardstock and I am going to bring in the trimmer. I absolutely love this Stampin' Trimmer. The Stampin' Up Trimmer is the best on the market, not because I sell it, but because I've tried them all. You're going to love that clear cutting guide if you ever have to make diagonal cuts or very narrow cuts or score lines. It includes both the scoring and the cutting blade. They navigate up and down out of the way. They stay right on the track. You don't have to worry about fumbling with anything. There's a straight edge here and here because I can't do anything straight. So that makes me look really, really good. Now, all these measurements are inside your template. Six and a quarter by 10 and three quarters. We're gonna do two score lines. The first one is at four and three quarters. I'm gonna line that up here at the top and we're gonna score. The next one is at six inches, which is all the way here to the edge. Now, if you're a scrapbooker, you might be saying, well, that's kind of cool, but that ends at six inches. Well, no, it doesn't. It goes all the way out just past 17. So we've got our 12 by 12 users covered as well. So this is one piece. Now there is a second piece, which is what I'm calling the pocket on your project sheet. This is simple because you're gonna do equal score lines all the way around. It's two inches, that's all you have to remember. So we're gonna start on one end here. I'm using that straight edge to my advantage, looking here at two inches, and I'm going to score. We're gonna turn two inches, and we're gonna score. And then I'm gonna turn one more time. So you're doing all four sides. And you might be thinking, well, that's gonna look kind of weird because the center is gonna be very, very narrow. Yep. All right, let me set that off to the side, give us a little bit more space. Now, I know you love when I use my silver pencil, but I think my regular pencil tonight is going to work well. I don't know if you can see this or not, but this is only a one inch area. And you might not think this is gonna work, but bear with me. Now on your template, I have this all diagrammed for you, but I'm gonna do it visually for you tonight. We are going to cut away this. We're gonna cut away this, this, and then this. And the reason is we wanna miter the corners to make this easier to put together. There's nothing hard about this. This is super easy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my scissors for this. And I like a nice long pair of scissor tips for this. If you are very proficient with your trimmer, you go for it. There's a score line here and a score line here. So all we're doing is mitering this. So I'm gonna come over here like this and we're gonna cut this off and we're gonna do this all the way around. Very, very simple. These are then going to fold. This reduces the bulk in the corner so that you have a better chance of getting your box to look nice. Now what we're going to do is we are going to cut up from the bottom to that first score line here and here, and then from here to here and here to here, and that's gonna make the flaps. So I'm gonna do that now. So I'm gonna cut from here to here, and then here to here, 
And I'm going to turn it to make it easy for my hand. And then I'm going to cut from here to here again. So you see the flaps of the box coming together? All right, this is the hardest part, I promise. All right, now I'm going to take my bone folder and we're going to crease up on those edges. So here's one here and here's one here. And there's another one. Remember, we mitered the corners here. So I'm just taking my time so they're nice and crisp. And then I'm going to take another one here and here. You can certainly crease up before you cut. I just did it for the sake of the live stream. All right, now we're going to put this together. So let me show you. These are going to come to the inside. Do you see it? These are going to come to the top. This is going to make the pocket. Now you can use liquid glue. If you've been here to my YouTube channel before, you know I am not a glue girl. Don't hate me. So we're gonna speed things up tonight with my Stamp and Seal Plus because this is a very strong adhesive. Obviously, if you weren't watching me, I would take a whole lot more time and I would definitely use liquid glue for this so I could get into those tiny little corners. But we're just gonna speed up the fact that this is how the box is gonna get put together. That'll make it easier for you. All right, so now that we've got the adhesive on, we're gonna take that first one and we're gonna match up that raw end to that crease line. And we're gonna do the same thing back here. And we're gonna come around and I'm gonna move these in, but I'm gonna to try to keep my finger here because I don't want that to stick before I'm ready, like that. And then we're gonna attach that one here. And then this one here. It's so fun to watch a project come together. Okay, so on the inside, it actually looks nice. It's all mitered and clean. I'm gonna come in with my fingers, plenty big enough, and just make sure my adhesive or your glue is good and stuck. All right, remember this piece here? This is the cover to the actual box or the jacket, whatever you wanna call it. If you have a corner rounder, you can use it. You can do whatever you'd like with this. I'm just keeping it super basic for you. I'm gonna use my bone folder, first score line. This is your chance to check to make sure that these are even. None of us cuts and scores perfectly, so you can kind of jerry-rig that a little bit left and right if necessary to get those score lines in place. Okay, we're almost done. Now on my original one, I added some designer series paper to the pocket and it looks like I may have forgotten to cut that, but that's okay, I've got another one to share with you. This is going to get attached. Now let me tell you the mistake I made. I made this centered thinking I was brilliant, but then it wouldn't stand up. So I want you to, to attach this lower to the bottom. So watch. Liquid glue obviously is gonna be easier. I'm gonna be like a little daredevil tonight. So I'm gonna come in with my adhesive. Let's go ahead and put my hand inside of there so we got something to press again. That's just gonna speed things up for tonight's live stream, okay? I've got my adhesive all the way around. You wanna work near the bottom so that this and this are very close in proximity so that it doesn't tip. Does that make sense? So I'm looking for this first score line here and I'm looking near the bottom and I'm looking on the right and the left and once I'm kind of happy with it, we're gonna go ahead and stick that down. Remember I told you that adhesive is super duper strong. So I'm gonna push really, really hard. Oh my gosh, this is so fun. This now is the cover. Remember that piece we made? All right, obviously if you want to do the cover first before you assemble the box, you absolutely can. I'm just changing things up for the live stream for you. And I'm just adding extra adhesive because I know it's a 3D project. If this is bulky, work backwards. So I'm gonna just bend that up a little bit, looking to leave that margin once again. Really pretty, isn't it? Okay, so I'm gonna flip and rub from the inside. All right, and there's the pocket. So here's the, Here's the actual front. Here's the pocket that's going to hold the cards. All right, now let me share with you. This is the card I made before you joined me. That one has the actual three strings on it, where tonight's card only had the two strings. So I just separated these a bit more. Again, no two cards are exactly the same. But inside here is where all the goodness comes into play. All right, so let me share this with you. This is the ones we made tonight. This is the one I made ahead of time that's gonna be in your project sheet. So do you like that heron in the back or in the front? Really great, isn't it? Do you notice these? I wanna show you them. These are called the faux sea glass shapes and I had a ton of fun with these on these cards. Wait till you see the cards inside. So they're actually plastic gems with different shapes. Now they have glue dots already on the back. So all I did was kind of situate them just randomly here across the bottom just to kind of give this a little bit of a pebble look. And I loved, loved, loved the way that they turned out. And again, they have glue dots on the back, so they're gonna stick very, very nicely. 
All right, so that's how I added those accessories. So this is the one I made. All right, this is skipping ahead. So this is the one that I did beforehand. I added some designer paper here, totally optional, which I didn't do here tonight. That pocket may not look wide enough, but it's perfect for four cards. So let me show you. So here is the card we made, obviously with the two strings. That was card number one. Here is the second card, exact same watercoloring. Do you see how uneven I made this? Doesn't even matter, does it? Incredible. So pretty. Use the same concept, same stamp, same theme. Here's another. So this one I die cut in an oval. Just use just some of the greenery. Very simple with some gems. And then here was my last one. So I did a different orientation. Don't be afraid to change the direction of your cards. Totally fine. This time, that label die that comes in that die set, I used to hold my linen thread. So it's all anchored here. Of course, you got to have your envelopes with a little something, something in the corner, right? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put all these together. This is the one we made together. I'm going to put them together. There's that one inch circumference you need. You're going to tuck them down inside of your pocket and then you're going to close this up. Look at the presentation this is. Isn't this beautiful? Now, this is the one I made as my very first one. And guess what? I didn't put the bottom all the way at the bottom. Do you see it? which is what I did tonight, big difference, okay? Obviously this is empty. So please make sure that you change that. Now let me show you the other ones. I'm super excited about these. Again, you'll have a whole project sheet on all four cards, cutting dimensions, supplies, and photos, including the cover. Here is the second one. This comes from the Framed Florets Bundle. Now this is a specialty bundle right now, or a collection I should say. So right now you can buy the dies, the stamps, the designer paper all together because boohoo, the designer series paper is only for a limited time. It's actually only available until January 4th and then it's gone, but it's only available while supplies last. And I have a funny feeling that paper as gorgeous as it is, is running out. Now these dies are exquisite. I did link all the projects for you in your project sheet. Isn't this beautiful? All right, so here comes the inside. I did do the designer series paper panel here. Wait until you see these cards. Are you ready? All right, so one of the most beautiful things about the die set is it has a die that creates the open, the negative of the hearts inside solid paper so that when you put designer paper or cardstock behind it, it peeks through. Isn't that beautiful? Greenery is easy to color. I used alcohol-based Stampin' Blends markers and those beautiful heart pearls just to accent it. The biggest thing when you're making a gift set of cards is make all the greetings different so that the receiver is able to use them throughout the year. Here is the second one. Beautiful. Look at those dies. Oh, they are champions. The greetings are all part of that stamp set. Here's another. The dies for this are fantastic. The inside ovals and the outside ovals can be worked together to create staggered layers, beautiful iridescent ribbon and rhinestones for that one. And then here is the last card for this four pack. Pretty, huh? And gorgeous. And again, our pretty little envelope. So we've got all of this and this goes right back down inside. But I promised you I had a bonus one for tonight. So these two are in your project sheet. The bonus one for tonight is completely off the grid. So let me start by showing you what I used. I used Hello Ladybug. Now this is in the current annual catalog. It has a coordinating punch, which is the Ladybug Builder Punch. Love it because it's going to punch out this and this, which makes assembly super duper easy. I did bring in an additional punch and it's this one, the Medium Daisy Punch. And you may be asking, will that punch out that flower? Uh, not perfectly, okay? It's, it's a different size and a slightly different shape if you can see it there on the glare, okay? But I wanted to make sure you knew where this came from. It's not in your project sheet. Here we go. Here's the one that I made. This is my ribbon sticking out. So I kept it very, very simple. And just a little ribbon here for an accent. Look at the gems on here for those dots. Isn't that fun? All right, so here's the inside. Again, I added some designer paper here. I mean, you could go crazy if you wanted to. Great project for scraps. And here on the inside, we've got our ladybug card. So here is our first one. These are all from the same stamp set, the images and the greetings. Love that you can use one stamp set and just a few ink pads and you can have gorgeous cards. This one I think is my favorite. Oh, I don't know if it's gonna pick it up. There you go. 
I punched all those daisies out. I glued them down super easy with that precision tip glue applicator. Cut away the excess from the border, added a red gem to the center. This is just cardstock. So I didn't even use the stamps this time, but I did stamp the dots on her. And then I tied some ribbon. Oh, this is just beautiful. Okay. And then this one, very simple. Some flowers, some punch ladybug. Use that gingham, made a little trail down here. It's a good day. And then this one, I went way off on the grid. Okay. I was like, oh my gosh, this will make a bumblebee. So I took that daisy punch and I staggered those flowers together. The center is included in that stamp set. Use that black and white designer series paper that's in the current mini catalog. By the way, it's on the chopping block. It will be retiring. So as of December 1st, you'll want to make sure you grab that black and white paper. I'm a huge fan of black and white. It goes with everything. So I just turned that into a bumblebee. So now we've got our gorgeous four pack of cards and this is your bonus project for tonight. And I'm trying to get my head out of your camera view and get it all shoved right back inside of there. So we've got this one for tonight is the bonus and then these two inside your project sheet. As always, I love to know which one is your favorite. Do me a favor, leave me a comment below. A couple things before we leave. A, don't forget my Cyber Monday special. All my PDF tutorials in my library are 50% off until 11.59 p.m. Eastern time. I'm going to stay on with you live for an open and live Q&A. If you would like to do the live Q&A with me, start now by typing the letter Q and a colon with what your question is because there's a delay when I speak and when you hear it. Now, before the rest of you go, if you choose not to stay, there's a couple things you need to know about. You want to sign up for my free weekly e-newsletter because I'm going to give you a PDF tutorial project there that I don't share anywhere else. It's just a no frills email, comes right to your inbox. How do you sign up? Easy. Head over to my website at lisasstampstudio.com. Scroll to the bottom. You'll see the word subscribe. Click on it and sign up and we would love to include you. It goes out every Thursday. In addition to that, I have a favor if you will mark your calendar for the next live. It will be next Monday, December 5th at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Gina's going to be here with me. God willing that she's feeling better. She's pretty miserable today, so we're missing her here. But we have six amazing cards to share with you on Monday, all using one card layout, and they are spectacular because as we get into December now, we're busy. And we need quick, cute Christmas ideas, and we've got you covered, not just for the holidays, but we're going to have cards for after the holidays as well. So you're going to want to make sure that you join us. Make sure you download that free project sheet when tonight's live stream is over. You can find lots more inspiration over on my website at lisastampstudio.com. For the rest of you not staying for the Q&A, I look forward to having you join me next Monday. Now, for those of you staying with the live stream, this is the informal part. You're going to have to see my head while I reach for my mouse. Make sure you type that Q and a colon and what your question is because I can highlight it here on the screen and I can answer it for you live. And we'll do about five of those now. All right, so let me move all of this pretty stuff out of the way. And yes, those are going to be Christmas presents for family this year. I probably ruined it for half of them if they're watching. All right, so let me go ahead and get that Q in here and that colon. And let's see if we've got any questions here that we can help you with. All right, I see a question here for Joanne. Do you know if Stampin' Up! sells a clear cutting guide replacement? Mine has a crack in it. Oh, Joanne, they don't sell it in the catalog but I know that I can take good care of you because I believe you're a customer of mine. You are, so just send me an email and I will be happy to talk to Stampin' Up! and get you a replacement. Please keep in mind if you have a product like a trimmer or your Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine and something goes awry, contact your demonstrator if that's not me. He or she would be happy to help you get those replacement parts for you. Okay, great question, Joanne. All right. And Susan has a question. I have trouble opening the ink pads. They are very hard to open. Do you have a trick? Uh, yes, let me pull one out. I actually have YouTube shorts here on my YouTube channel. And I recently did this video. I mean, a YouTube short is 30 to 60 seconds, but I'm happy to show you while you're here live with me. Let me just make sure I'm gonna press the right button here. Okay, here we go. We're back down to the desktop. Here's an ink pad. There's a little notch here. All you have to do is lift it, okay? This pivots and then this slides into the track. 
Now, when these are brand new, this is plastic, okay? This is difficult sometimes, especially with my arthritic hands, to get them to slide, all right? So are you ready for like a little bonus tip tonight? All right, let me pull out, out of my drawer. I have this little container and I keep a birthday candle or two in here. Now these look really beat up, but don't worry, it's gonna work great. The wax from this fits perfectly inside of here, watch. So I'm gonna run this like this and I'm gonna run this like this. Okay, just a little bit of wax, the birthday candle works great. I give this a good knock on my work surface because obviously I wanna make sure there's no loose wax and then this is going to slide. So when it closes, you're gonna hear a snap and these ends are gonna be flush. Now, when you open it, this little area here is for your fingers. Now I have small fingers, so that works really easy. And I can pull forward and then flip and then make sure it's sealed. If that's difficult for you, because I get it, I have arthritic hands as well. You see the two dots here? You can push right there, just inside of those. So there's a dot here and dot here. You're gonna push on the cover and that releases the lid. And again, you're gonna do the exact same thing. Now, if closing here is too hard, you're gonna push here from the back to release it, pull forward, and then pivot and lock. Okay, I'm hoping that helped you, I hope so. Um, that was just, I didn't expect to have to do that whole thing for you, but I hope that was beneficial. All right, um, Ginger has a question. How can we get the new mini catalog? She's talking about January 5th and the celebration catalog. Well, Ginger, you're in good luck because you're in one of my customers. Um, if you're a customer here of mine at Lisa Stamp Studio, if you've spent $50 between May of 2020 through the month of November, you are automatically getting it mailed to you. I finished all of that yesterday. Stampin' Up! will mail them, oh, probably around the 10th of December. So they will come probably very close to the holidays. Keep in mind, holiday mail is a little bit slower, so you have to be patient. Now, if you're not a customer of mine, check with your existing demonstrator, or I'd love to have your business and would love to earn it. You can actually request a catalog over on my website. Just head over there and you'll get all that information. But those of you that are customers, they're coming your way. I got you covered if you spent $50. Um, Eileen has a question. What is the best way to clean the masks? So Eileen's question is about a decorative mask, which is what Stampin' Up! calls a stencil. You're just gonna run it underneath tap water. And then I like to use just a dry paper towel and just kind of pat it and I let it dry on its own. I don't want the lint to get inside those stencil areas. Super easy, just tap water and let it rinse and then just pat it dry. Make sure it's dry before you use it because you don't want that water to go onto your cardstock. Um, all right, let me see. I'm trying to scroll for another question. Uh, okay, Rhonda has a good question. Rhonda said, last week you used rubbing alcohol and wink of Stella inside the spritzer. Yes, I did. What is the advantage of using rubbing alcohol over water? Okay, so Rhonda, um, the wink of Stella has a chemical alcohol type base, which is why the shimmer dries so quickly. So if you put it with water, it's going to dilute it and it's going to warp your cardstock or your designer series paper. You don't want that. You want rubbing alcohol because it's going to evaporate to leave the shimmer behind. You can, however, use that spritzer with one drop of ink refill and put water in it if you'd like. However, make sure you're using either watercolor paper or shimmery white cardstock that will hold up to the water consistency even as a spritz. The rubbing alcohol really is the best way to go for either of those techniques though. All right, I think that's it for tonight. I am so glad that you guys have joined me and I hope that you'll come back to see me on Monday. Have a great evening, everyone.